Hey everyone, we are back for part two, chapter two, The Broken Window, which is a simply illustrated fallacy about advantage of destruction. Okay, The Broken Window, it comes from Bastiat, and it is about a baker who was in his shop. Uh, unbeknownst to him, there was a hoodlum with a brick, and the hoodlum threw the brick through the plate glass window of the baker shop and obviously bricks don't mix well with plate glass windows so it shattered and it was destroyed the baker was furious he runs out but the hoodlum is gone and no one saw him no cameras and um so there's no one to hold financially accountable for this act of destruction so the baker is now outside looking at the glass that is all over the sidewalk, it's all over the bread and the pies, it's a disaster. And uh, other people now are attracted to the scene and they're looking at this broken glass window. And they start reflecting on it and what this could mean and they're, you know, uh, thinking about it philosophically, and they say, well, you know, hey, this isn't all bad. Look at the bright side. At least this will make work for some glacier. Um, you know, how much does a, a, a new plate glass window cost? I mean, nowadays it would probably be a few thousand dollars. So a few thousand dollars? Wow, that's quite a sum. <laughs> I mean, you know, if plate glass windows didn't break, what would happen to the glass business? Am I right? Um, and then they go further. They think, well, you know, you're going to give all that money to the glacier. And then he or she, I suppose, uh, they in turn will uh, have that much more to spend with other businesses. And then those businesses will spend the money with other businesses. And in ever widening circles, this new employment brought about by the destruction of this window will enrich the community. Now, taken to the extreme, this thinking, which was brought about by only what they saw right in front of them, you might conclude that, okay, this person that threw the brick wasn't a jerk. They actually are a, a benefit to society. Well, we know that's not true. I mean, in our gut, immediately, you know that's not true, right? Um, now, this is only from what the people on the street could see and the conclusions they can draw. Now, here's what they didn't know. The baker had saved up some money, a few thousand dollars, around the amount it would take to replace this uh, glass window. But he was actually gonna take that money and give it to the local tailor. He was gonna have a suit made and uh, it was something he was saving up for, so obviously he was excited for it. I mean, if you're going to save up that kind of money, it's obviously something you really want. This simple illustration is with the baker wanting the suit. Uh, I think it was chosen just to keep it simple. You know, it, it was a suit which was, uh, which was a, a luxury or a want, not a piece of equipment that would, you know, create efficiency in his business or anything like that. So they wanted to keep it simple. So anyway, the baker <clears throat> had saved up this money and he was going to buy himself uh, the suit a that day, actually, that afternoon. Uh, he was going to take the money and go to the tailor. So the people that were being philosophical didn't know that. But now here's the problem. The baker obviously has to replace the window. I mean, you can't run a business uh, with that. I mean, it's obvious you have to replace the window. So, so now instead of being able to, to do that, he won't be able to get the suit. He's just going to have to replace the window. So in other words, before the guy or gal or whoever threw the brick through the window, he already had a perfectly good window. And let's face it, windows don't go bad. Windows are pretty simple. They just need to keep the inside from the outside and you need to see through them. Um, so they last for decades. 
So he was just fine with that window. It was doing its job. <laughs> so <clears throat> instead of having a window and a few thousand dollars, now he just has the window because he has to replace it. He has to replace something he already had that was working. It was just fine. Okay. It was totally fine. Um, and, but then it got destroyed. So instead of having a window and a few thousand dollars, he just now has a window. Okay. It's like that capital just evaporated. Instead of having a window and a suit, now he just has the window. Comparatively, if you look at him from his point of view, he's poor that amount of capital or he's poor that suit. If you put him in the context of society, society is poorer that amount, that suit. And this will make more sense when Hazlitt talks about the difference between money and wealth or the wealth of a nation. There's a difference that will be elaborated on. Now, the, uh, the crowd was half right or partially right. Uh, the, the breaking of the window will make a uh, new business for the glacier that he wouldn't have had if the destruction hadn't happened. However, it's not new employment. It's simply a diversion of employment. The employment that was going to go to the tailor is now going to the glacier. And this is really important because when we get to the next chapter, the blessings of destruction, which is a fallacy, um, that's a big problem that people have. They, they seem to think, they seem to think that devastation can immediately blesses you with some kind of new employment. And that's not the case. It's actually just a diversion. Okay. And <clears throat> I would also like to point out that in order for that window to be replaced, that Baker had to save up that money. Okay. He had to have that capital. He accumulated that capital. He saved it. He was going to buy the suit, but he had to replace it. So there was no, uh, new employment. There was just a diversion of employment and there was no net benefit. Uh, there was just a loss. Okay. The, the loss of the capital, the loss of the suit from, you know, that the capital would have turned into and, uh, the money that was going to be given to the tailor would have done just the same thing as it would have from the glacier. It would have gone out and found its way to other parts of the community. So that <clears throat> basically uh, is the broken window, the fallacy of the broken window. And it will be elaborated on uh, in the next chapter. And there uh, is a lot to unpack with that. Because besides uh, the broken window, uh, there's a whole bunch of related fallacies that go with it. And it gets uh, pretty in-depth. So anyway, I hope you'll join me for that. Feel free to comment. I hope you are reading the book. It's a great book. And uh, even the audiobook is great. I like that one too. So take care and I'll see you here probably in a week or less. All right, take care. Bye-bye.